Well, the former double champ Daniel Cormier was there in Miami cage side as usual. He joins us now here on SportsCenter. All right, DC, so O'Malley, he avenges that loss to Vera. He gets his first title defense. And in dominating fashion, those 230 significant strikes I mentioned, that's the most ever in the history of the band and weight division in terms of a title fight. Why was he so dominant this time around against Cheeto? First off, Eves, this was your type of fight night. We miss you out here, my guy. But let me tell you something. Sean O'Malley painted a masterpiece. He had an opportunity to fight a guy that beat him before. He had the right city. He had the right card. He had all the things needed to put on a superstar performance, and he did it. Dude, he was so focused. He set so many traps, and he really just fought the perfect fight. He never allowed Cheeto Vera to get going. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah, the, the range was there, obviously, for Sean early, and he just kept tagging uh, Cheeto, whether it was southpaw or conventional, and you saw the damage on Cheeto's face throughout this fight. Again, 230 significant strikes. That's also a career high for Sean O'Malley. And he was so dominant in this fight. He looked very impressive when he won the fight against Aljamain Sterling back in August of last year, D.C. And now the question is, what is next for him? After the fight, he said he actually wants to move up 10 pounds to the featherweight division to challenge Ilya Teporia for his belt that he just got from Volkanovski. In your mind, what is best for Sugar Sean in terms of his next fight, but also what's the fight that fans deserve to see? You know, honestly, the fans have rallied around Marab Dualishvili. So I believe that is going to be the next fight, especially since Ilya has not defended his championship yet. But... Very exciting that Sean O'Malley took that shot. Ilya's a scary guy, but it's showing you the confidence that Sean O'Malley has in himself today as he continues to improve time and time again. But I do believe that Marab really, who was in attendance tonight, will be the next guy to challenge Sugar Sean O'Malley. And if tonight was any indication, Sean O'Malley will be better the next time he steps into the octagon. He's done it every single time. In D.C., that's the thing. Like, when he first came to the UFC with, with the flair, but also the skills, he seemed to be destined for greatness. It, it was a, a target put on his back that he should be a champion in the UFC at some point. And maybe he got there faster than some people thought he did. But he is there now. He's now defended his title. As you take a look at the overall uh, scale of the UFC, pound-for-pound pound fighters, where are you putting Sugar Sean in those rankings right now in your mind? You, I'm starting to move him up because he has not only won that belt, he's defended that belt. But it's more than just him winning the fights. It's what you see when he's in the octagon. His skill set tells you it would, it would go between weight classes, the way that he moves between positions, the angles, the creativity, all the flair that is in his lifestyle seems to be present inside the octagon. The guy is a star, Mike. He had the biggest gate in UFC history outside of Conor McGregor. He headlined Miami. It was full for a Bantamweight title fight. Everything is coming together for Sugar Sean O'Malley. Hey, there's been a, a, a lot of comings and goings in the UFC as of late in terms of guys with their belts and st superstars taking losses. The guy who keeps living up to the hype right now, that's Sugar Sean O'Malley, and he just defended his title 135 pounds for the first time. Daniel Cormier, as always, brother, appreciate the perspective. Thank you so much, Eves.